I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Here we talk a lot about toxins and how they impact your reproductive health. Today we're going to focus on phthalates, an endocrine disruptor I want you to learn more about and how to decrease your exposure to improve your overall health. Stick around. I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. I'm a reproductive endocrinologist with over 15 years experience helping people build their families and 15 years experience of answering the question, what can I do to improve my fertility? What can I do to improve my chances of having a baby? And we often talk about lifestyle changes and optimizing health. A huge part of this is decreasing exposure to endocrine disruptors. Today, I want to focus on Phthalates. Phthalates are a common endocrine disruptor found in many household products that when we are exposed to it in high levels, not only impacts our reproductive health, but our overall health and well-being. So today we're going to learn exactly what phthalates are, where we can find them in our home, why it's important to learn more about this and ways we can decrease our exposure. So phthalates are plasticizers. It's a chemical that was discovered around the 1920s, and it is used throughout our home. We can find it in toys for our children. We can find it in PVC pipes running through our home. We can find it in candles, air fresheners, um, beauty products. So a lot of products that we use on our skin, a lot of products that we're touching throughout our home have uh, phthalates in them. Phthalates do a great job of helping plastic be more flexible, but stay durable. And they also do a great job of stabilizing fragrance and products like beauty products. So it increases the shelf life. So uh, makeup with phthalates in it will not separate necessarily a lot of the oils from some of the pigments that are used. Um, it'll make it so the fragrance lasts longer so that when you open it up, it still smells beautiful after years of being on the shelf um, so that something can stay on the shelf longer. So phthalates do a wonderful job at helping these products. It's just that we've now learned that high levels of these phthalates in our bodies really disrupt our endocrine system. So they act on, like hormones. They attach to receptors in our in our body like a hormone and kind of turn on systems turn off systems when they're they are and aren't supposed to be working in that way they kind of act like estrogen they act like testosterone and our body can get really confused research has shown that high levels of phthalates can decrease our reproductive health high levels are associated with poor egg quality poor sperm quality higher risk of miscarriage lower chance of success with fertility treatments higher chance of polycystic ovarian syndrome or endometriosis all types of endocrine functions in our bodies can be really harmed by high levels of these phthalates. But these phthalates are also associated with other aspects of our health, thyroid dysfunction, increased risk of obesity, uh, insulin resistance, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, even some cancers. And we have recognized the worries of phthalates. In 2008, Congress passed the Consumer Product Improvement Safety Act in which three phthalates were limited, um, not able to be used in products that were toys for kids that they could put in their mouth, like chew toys, pacifiers, etc. Now, there's many more than three phthalates, and phthalates are throughout products in our home. And so it's so great that we recognize the danger of phthalates and how we don't want our children to be chewing on toys and getting high levels of phthalates, but um, this is not the only place that you can find phthalates. It's overwhelming when you first start learning about phthalates and other endocrine disruptors and how they impact our overall health. I really did not learn about toxins and health in medical school, hopefully, uh, doctors are learning more about it now, but I really was not exposed to this. I learned about this in trying to answer my patients' questions and in doing the research for my books on fertility and miscarriage. And as I'm writing blog posts and answering people's questions on Instagram, every time someone asked a question, I'd look it up and I really started to become overwhelmed with the strength of the data that's out there. The data is there. It might be overwhelming, but there's also really wonderful studies that show that if you decrease your 
exposure to phthalates by changing some everyday products that you use that you can retest levels in your system and they'll do, be dramatically lower. So you really can make choices that decrease your exposure to phthalates and improve your overall health and well-being. So let's talk about five ways you can decrease your exposure to phthalates today. Number one, get plastic away from your food. So some plastics in your kitchen are gonna have phthalates in them. So kind of like bisphenol A or BPA, phthalates are used in plastics to make it more malleable. So do not use plastic food storage containers, use glass, use stainless steel. When you get takeout, um, fantastic. Get it delivered, go pick it up. As soon as you get it home, get it out of the takeout containers, which are full of chemicals that help it not leak, which is great, but you don't want that in your system. So get them out, um, eat your food. If you have leftovers, store them in something other than those takeout containers. Number two, eat less processed food. The more processed a food is from the farm to your table, the more it's going to be exposed to not only phthalates, but other endocrine disruptors that are in the food containers and the PVC pipes and the storage and getting from the farm to the table. So less processed food will be more beneficial. Number three, change your water bottle. No plastic water bottles. It's great if you have BPA free, but that does not mean that it's free from endocrine disruptors that are in plastics. So get a glass water bottle, get a stainless steel water bottle, no plastic water bottles. Number four, choose fragrance free. So air fresheners, scented candles, strong smelling laundry detergent, perfumes that you're using, very often anything with a strong fragrance is gonna have phthalates. So really try to decrease the number of products in your home that have fragrance. Something that is really important to realize is that any ingredients in a product that a company can claim is there for fragrance of the product, that can be considered a trademark and it can be considered protected from listing ingredients on the bottle. So very often a red flag when you're trying to read ingredients in a product that you're buying at a store, if it says fragrance as an ingredient, it very likely has phthalates in it or some sort of endocrine disruptors. So be mindful of that. Number five, rethink your cosmetics. We can be exposed to multiple cosmetics before we even walk out the door in the morning. You know, shampoo, conditioner, lotion, sunscreen, lip gloss, mascara, maybe multiple makeup products. And even the laundry detergent that's on our clothes kind of is exposed to our skin. So if you could choose safer products and phthalate free products, you can dramatically decrease your daily exposure to phthalates. So ways to find safer products, you could choose a company that you feel confident in. I happen to be on the scientific advisory board of Beauty Counter. I've learned a lot about how they are leading the way and lobbying Congress for more transparency in the beauty industry and really making their own safer products. There are other brands that are doing a wonderful job. I just happen to be familiar with Beauty Counter. Another way to to find great beauty products are to look for a company that actually sells multiple brands, but their whole focus is um, lower toxic products. So one is Credo Beauty and another is Full Lane. Um, another way to learn more about products are there are databases that you can find. Um, environmental Working Group, Think Dirty, Made Safe, these three companies all have their own databases and own way of labeling, learning, reviewing products, and they even make apps for your phone. I know that Environmental Working Group has one and Think Dirty has one. You can actually put the app on your smartphone and scan a barcode in your home. You can check out what shampoo you have right now and what ingredients are in it and how safe it is, and then compare it to other brands when you go to the grocery store or your department store to kind of look at other options. One thing that's important to realize when you're using a database and trying to learn about your own products that you already use and maybe finding new ones is that each database has its own list of um, products. Um, so not every product is probably gonna be in every database and each company has their own 
uh, regulations and rules and ingredients that they're looking for. So you could find a product that is considered pretty safe in one database and then might not be considered as safe in another. There's usually some alignment and some awareness, but just it can get confusing if you're trying to compare um, and find products. Just want to let you know. I hope you learned a lot today. There are so many resources that I can help you learn more. You can find blog posts on endocrine disruptors on my website. Um, I write about endocrine disruptors and ways to decrease your exposure to them in both of my books, Planting the Seeds of Pregnancy and Not Broken, An Approachable Guide to Miscarriage and Recurrent Pregnancy Loss. Um, I post about environmental toxins every Tuesday on Instagram. I have highlights in TikTok as well. So I'm trying to educate without fear, get this information out to you and give you solid choices that you can make every day to improve your overall health and well-being. Please like this video if you learned something today, comment below with any questions that you have or other topics you want me to cover and subscribe so you get notifications for when new videos are here. Stick around for more interesting videos and learning.